So hello everyone, welcome to the demo theater of configure a customized mobile app using App Studio. First of all, let me give you an introduction of myself. My name is Tina and I work as a product engineer with App Studio team. Um, I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you have heard of App Studio before? Wow, nice. <laughs> so for those of you who do not know App Studio, App Studio is a developing tool. It helps you to create a cross-platform native application. With that being said, you only need to write one code base and you can deploy your app on all platforms. We support iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Whether you are developers or you are not developers, you can all use App Studio to write your native app. So in this uh, today's demo series, I will show you how to configure one of our most popular template, which is called MapViewer, without writing any code. This is my App Studio desktop. I have downloaded from appstudio.rgs.com downloading page. There are a lot of ways to start to create a new app. Now I'm going to click on this new app purple button. If you like to write your app from scratch, here we have a few empty basic starter apps. We also provide you three ready-to-use configurable template apps. Later, I'm going to show you how to configure the map via template. We have also provided a few nice-looking material design layout. For example, now I'm going to double-click on it to create a set manual material design layout. This really helps you to get started with and get familiar with how to create a basic app with a structure like this. If you are a developer, you know how to write some code. We have provided you more than 70 samples app to demonstrate either RGS runtime or uh, app framework functionality. You can check out the source code and combine them with the layout to create your own app. If you know Survey123, a lot of our users actually download the source code of Survey123 from the desktop. They start to customize and rebranding it. So today I'm going to show you how to create a app like this. So this is my, uh, let me just try to run it again from the beginning. This is my National Park Trails app. It is created using the map VR template. So what it can do is it can present your own web maps or your own mobile map packages into a native app. You can run it on your mobile devices. So first of all, let's take a look of this app. This is a landing page. I have two buttons. You can sign into your ArcGIS online or portal to view your public or secured content. We also provide an option to skip sign in so your app user doesn't really need to have an ArcGIS online account. They can still view the public content that are provided by you. So now I'm going to click on this sign in button to sign into my ArcGIS online account. This pop-up is asking me if I want to enable Touch ID to sign in, and I will say yes. So as you can see on this uh, app, this is a gallery page. We have two sections, the offline map section and the web map sections. Under the web map section, we have a collection of National Park Trails web map, which were created by the federal user community. 
and I also have one secured content, which you can indicate. You can see this Grand Canyon National Park on the top middle. There's a small lock icon on it. This indicates that this web map it is secured. You have to sign in to access this web map. Now let me just open one of the web map. So I'm going to tap on the first Zion National Park. So as you can see in here, I have a map of Zion National Park that I can interact with. I also have this map details panel on the left hand side where you can find your web map descriptions. You can have the legend information. You can turn on or off layers. You can also tap on it to identify your layers to show the pop-up. On the top bar of my national park trails, I also have a set of tools. Now I'm going to click on this search icon. It is asking me, do I want to, do I want do I allow the app to access my current location? I would say yes. So on the set panel, I can do play search or I can do a feature search. So now I'm going to search for a campsite against this backcountry campsite layer. So I have configured my searching queries in my RGIS online. Now I'm going to put the West Rim in it. Eh? Sorry, I have a back spelling. West Rim. Now it returns me all of the campsite that is along the West Rim hiking trail in the National Park. We also have this measure tool which allows you to measure for a distance. I can change the color of my measurements. I can choose to show or not show segment lengths. I can also change to different units. You can also measure for a specific area. What I like about this measure tool is ability to take a screenshot and share it through sending an email. Now let's move on to the next tool. I'm going to click on this bookmark icon, a base map icon. If you don't like the base map of your web maps, you can change to the base map that you like from this set panel gallery. If, you, if your web map has any bookmarks, you can also tap on it to zoom to your favorite place. Now we have another map unit tool. You can turn on or off map unit to show your geographic coordinate system. We also have this graphical tools which allows to display the graphicals on your map. So our team is actually working really hard to help you to config to fast and easily create your app. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to configure, uh, to configure and create an app like this using App Studio. Now I'm going to go back to my App Studio desktop. Again, click on this new app button and I will choose Map Viewer Template. So 
uh, I'm going to double click on it just to run it to see what this app looks like without any configuration. I'm going to click on this start button. I can see that the app is purple color by default. And I also have 25 most recent public web maps displayed in this gallery. So before I start to configure this web map, we really need to ask ourselves a few questions. We want to know what message we want to deliver to the user. We want to ask ourselves what this app should look like. What visual element should I use for the app, such as what color should I choose? What icon should I use? And what graphic should I use in this app? With those questions in mind, I have came up with the following assets. I want to call my app National Park Trails. And it is a collection of hiking maps for national parks. I have choose this brown color for my map branding color, which is the same color as the National Park Service logo. I think it will help my user to relate my app to national parks. I also choose this app icon and this mountain image for my app landing background. I found this really cool font which mimics the National Park Trail sign from this website that I decided to use in my app. Oh. OK. It's OK. So now let's go back to App Studio Desktop to start to configure the Map Viewer template app. I have my image and the font ready in here. I'm going to go to the folders. This opens my app project folder. I'm going to go to the assets folder to move my app files in here and also to move my app font files in the fonts folder. Now I'm going to click on this settings tool to start to configure my map view. I'm going to give it a name, National Park Trials. And I will go to my cheat sheet to copy the app summary, a collection of hiking maps for national parks. And also to copy paste my app description in this field. As I make changes, I like to apply it and to view it to see if my change has been applied. As you can see, the title has changed to National Park Trails. It's a collection of hiking maps for national parks. I'm going to click on the Start button and go to the About page. Oh, now it looks like the description is correct. It gives me the description of my National Park Trail set. Now let's go back to the Sightings tool and give my app as icon. I'm going to access folder and choose this hiking icon. Now let's move to the property section. Under the start screen, I'm going to replace the background image with my own mountain image. And I'm going to change the branding color in here. I want to increase the base font size just a little bit. Let's make it 15. And I'm going to use my cool National Park fonts in my app. All right, now let's hit on the Apply button to view my app. 
Okay, looks like my background image is the one that I have been chosen. And I'm going to click on the start button. The branding color looks great. It's uh, exactly what I have been chosen. Now we just need to bring our content into my app. So there are three ways to bring the content into, into your app. Okay, yeah. You can put your web maps or mobile map package I, item ID in there. You can also put the text of your item in here. So what I'm doing here is I have shared all of my content into a group, and I'm going to copy and paste this group ID into my app settings. So now I'm go back to my app settings and go to the gallery tab. I have my group ID ready in here. I just need to copy it and paste in here. Now let's apply it. Run it again. Oh, it looks good. All of my web maps of National Park Trails is in here, but where is my offline maps? So now there's one more thing that we need to configure in the settings. So under this maps to show in gallery, we have provided you the options to show online web map only, offline web map only. In this case, I'm going to choose to show both my online and offline MMPKs. Let's click on apply button and run it again. Start. Oh, there's a new tab called offline maps and I have my offline maps in here. If you remember, before I have a small teeny tiny lock icon with the Grand Canyon National Park. That is a secure content. So now I'm going to show you how to show the sign in button in the settings, how to configure it. So we have this support secured maps property. We will first need to enable it. We also need to get a client ID for your app to make your, your user to sign into their artist online. It is really easy to get a client ID. First of all, you will need to upload the app to your organization. I'm going to upload it right now. As you can see, before you upload, you can choose to make your app as a private app item you can also share it to your organization. You can also share it publicly, just like other artists' online items. Now I have successfully uploaded my app. I can register a client ID easily. I'm going to go to the licensing section, and we have this register button. Now you can see there's my client ID generated by, for me. Going to click on apply button and write it again. Oh yeah, there's a new sign in button. I'm going to sign into my Argis online account. And as you can see now, I have my secured content, the Grand Canyon. One more last tips and tricks I want to share with you is it really doesn't look good that this watermark in here, license for developer use only. So you can easily get rid of it by go to the licensing section and set a runtime free let license for your app. You can apply it and run it again. Now you can see the runtime watermark is disappear from my app. So now that I think my app looks good, 
you can upload your app again to your organization and run eh? this one and run it in a tool called App Studio Player. Can I show them player or you want to show them too late? Okay. Oh, I have it here. Yeah, I think I have it. Quick turn. So this is my App Studio Player. You can download it from App Store. I'm going to open my player. And it automatically signs my RGS online account because I have signed in before. It remembers my credentials. Now I'm going to download this National Park Trails to see how it looks like on a real device in my player. I'm going to tap on this run button to run it. Okay. Just keep signing. And I can just check my web maps in the player. Once you think your app is ready to go, you after you have been tested out, we have another tool in App Studio Desktop called the Cloud Make tool, it helps you to create app installation files. So we have a Cloud Make backend service to help you to create app binaries. All you need to do here is just simply choose your target platforms and you click on the request build. Just within a few minutes, the app installation file will be ready for you, and we will send you an email with all the instructions how to download to your device, or you can also use it to upload the app to the App Store. Now I'm going to hand it to the Chris. Thank you. I just, Tina did a fantastic job. Sorry. Really showing us how a deep dive into Figuring an app with App Studio and App Studio Desktop. Um, I just want to point out, for especially for people who maybe aren't too familiar with App Studio, what she did was obviously pure configuration. I didn't see any code there. She didn't edit any code. But App Studio, you can do all the things that she did there. As, as you kind of imagine these three different personas, maybe a configurator, someone that's really can get this far, can make an offline mapping application, brand it, push it to the stores. Um, and, and configure all those things with secure services and things without any code, like just as she showed. So you can do all those things kind of at this, if your skill level is at that configurator um, you know, spot. If you consider yourself a geohacker, like you can copy and paste code, understand JavaScript a bit, maybe some Python. You can do all that, take those templates, extend them, add that extra bit of functionality or button to it. Because with App Studio, you do get all the code as well. You can get into the, the code, um, add functionality, maybe start with one of our basic layouts to, to build an application. And then let's say you're that kind of maybe that next level you are, you consider yourself, you are a developer, you are fluent in a, in a programming language, you, uh, you know, are right, uh, maybe you're a, a full-on web developer or, or native developer, but what can you do with App Studio? You can, of course, do all those other things, but we also, with App Studio, we give you, you know, access to lots of apps, lots of samples. Lots of, um, you can integrate maybe with other hardware if you need to go to that extent. You can write custom components. We have enterprise templates. So this, is, this is kind of our basic, easily configurable. We have some enterprise templates. One of those is Survey123. If you want to write your own custom version of Survey123, branding it, maybe adding mapping functionality or other functionality that you need for your organization, you can have access to that as well. So um, you can get very far, as you saw today, with just configuring, but App Studio really kind of grows into these other um, skill and user levels as well. Just want to point that out. Um, I really, I think that's, that's all the time we have today. We have any questions from the audience? Yes.
So the question was, what's the difference between Qt Creator and App Studio? Um, so Qt Creator is the IDE or the Integrated Development Coding Environment for, for writing Qt and QML. App Studio is a, a suite of tools like App Studio Desktop that Tina showed for accessing, uh, for setting properties, for configuring, for accessing samples and templates. When, you, when it's time to get into the code, there's a button there you click, it launches Qt Creator, and then you get into the code, you know, run it, and, and they kind of, so they work in tandem. It is one install. You just install App Studio Desktop. It installs the desktop, it actually underneath it installs the uh, free version of, of Qt Creator as well. Yes? So, um, you, are you talking about updating the app or updating the map? The app. The app. Yes. So it depends. I mean, obviously, a lot of us are used to, um, you know, the way mobile phones work, Play Store and iTunes. You have to republish an app to those those app stores um, to then get that that update. So it would be a process of doing the build again, putting it into the, you know, this whole whole process depending on which store you're pushing into um, for updating that. Just like you are with any other app on your smartphone in that case, yeah. What's really, as far as push updating maps, which is very cool about this, this paradigm or this, what she showed here is that was, those were just pointing to a group yeah. of, of maps. Yes. So you could publish this and let's say you have new maps, offline or online maps that come in that are being developed. You just simply put that, share those to the group and they pop up in everyone's app. So you're kind of in control of things at that point once you publish them when you're just pointing to a group of items. So if it's offline, uh, you would have to update that off that item in, in, the, in your organization, and then you would have the option to refresh the offline map. Yeah. Okay, if anyone interested in the step-by-step -step okay. instructions, you can give me the email, I can send it to you. Yes, great job, Tina. It's a good, good, great demonstration. <laughs>